There is basically no limit to what Elon Musk can achieve. From his battery-powered cars to trucks that almost run at the speed of light to super-fast internet connection. And now, that great man is aiming to transform humans into multi-planetary species, creating multi-planetary life. But then again, this was his dream all along. With SpaceX's Starship, he's getting closer and closer to what some consider a realm of fantasy. However, in order to make human life multi-planetary, we must figure out, first, how to support life on Starship. Life support in space has never been easy, especially when keeping hundreds of people alive and healthy on Starship. So, how will SpaceX make sure that Starship can handle it? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. If you're thinking about booking a trip on SpaceX's huge spacecraft, the Starship, Here's something you absolutely can't miss. Starship is one of the extraordinary inventions of SpaceX. The space edifice is structured to be able to carry not just satellites, but a total of 100 people per flight, which is most likely to increase in the future. On Starship's official user's guide, SpaceX mentions that the crew configuration of Starship includes private cabins, large common areas, centralized storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. Notably, SpaceX will have a dedicated crew configuration of Starship. That means that things can be much crazier than previously anticipated. To better visualize, let's take a look at the concept for the interior layout of Starship made by the famous Canadian designer engineer Michel Lamontagne. The design divides the living space into seven decks, labeled A through G. From the bottom up, there are two openings between decks offset slightly from one deck to the next to reduce the risk of accidents related to trying to fly through multiple decks while in zero G. There are removable rails around the openings to prevent accidental falls while on Earth or Mars. All decks have a 2.2 meter high living space, except deck G, which is 2.16 meters high. The blue bars in some areas are examples of hand and footholds like they use on the International Space Station. The floors are shown with hexagonal tiles to indicate a system that will allow wall partitions and other items to be attached or removed to meet the tastes and needs of passengers. Deck A has the gym, an external airlock, some storage space, and a couple of toilets. The ISS found a need for two or more hours of exercise per day to avoid bone and muscle loss. Multiplied by 100 people, that requires 10 exercise machines. Note that several of them are mounted on the walls. Making full use of walls and ceilings for living space is a theme of this design since there's no down in zero G. The airlock allows access to the outside of the ship during flight in case of a need to make inspections or minor repairs and to support landing in places without pre-existing ground infrastructure. Decks B and C have passenger cabins and toilets. 25 rooms on each deck with two people per room, walls will be removed during launch and landing, seats are positioned radially for acceleration and paralleled during EDL, the position slash orientation of the seats can be changed automatically, with enough range of motion to account for the ship's direction vector change during EDL. After launch, the seats can be removed, disassembled, and stowed in the area on deck A. Carry-ons will be stored in the ceiling of each cabin. Passengers sleep on the walls, in simple sleeping bags as on ISS, to ease entry and exit while one or the other is asleep. Passengers will sleep in two shifts to make more room available per person on non-cabin decks when people are awake. Deck D is the solar storm shelter and a single toilet. The inside of the storm shelter consists of a 12 and a half centimeter layer of water packaged in plastic containers that can be removed. Water can be removed during the flight and used for cooking and replaced after processing. The ship will have a closed cycle water purification system, similar to the ISS, including urine, of course. Some of the interior storage layers will also be available for food. During a solar storm, all 100 passengers will need to be in this area. By nature of its position, the shelter will also provide some additional shielding for the cabin areas. 
Decks F and G are lounge areas. Large video monitors will be available in these areas for shared movie viewing and the like. Everyone is also assumed to have their own personal laptop. Both decks have a view through the large window on the leeward side of the ship. The design is great, but if SpaceX wants to put people on Starship for an extended period of time, things become much more complicated. And that means we need life support systems. So let's talk about the life support system needed to keep people alive and healthy while on Starship. <laughs> this is the basic technology that we need to be developed relatively soon if the spacecraft has any hope of carrying people to deep space destinations like the moon and Mars in the near future. A life support system is all the things needed for humans to fundamentally survive here on Earth. And you may not have considered this, but the most basic necessity is the atmosphere. Life support systems must supply the right mixture of gases for people to breathe and remove carbon dioxide from the air before it builds up to a dangerous amount. The right temperatures and atmospheric pressure have to be maintained. Astronauts will need drinking water along with a place for waterways to go. But it really makes you wonder, how will Musk deal with these problems? Well, he has addressed life support and human health in his Starship talks before, but only briefly. In a presentation, the SpaceX CEO was asked twice about the types of life support systems that Starship would use. I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself, Musk said. The life support system is pretty straightforward. Despite the quote, life support is more complicated than we thought when it comes to hundreds if not thousands of individual aspects and small items connecting to keep all of the crew alive. The average human consumes 660 liters of oxygen a day, meaning that Starship would need a massive amount of onboard oxygen or a large generator to support hundreds of people living aboard the craft for weeks or months. Meanwhile, both oxygen and water can be supplied in finite containers on a trip to orbit, just enough to get people to their long-term destination. On the ISS, luckily, where people live for months at a time, a regenerative system is in place for things like oxygen and water, meaning they're recycled in a closed loop system. Urine and sweat are recycled and turned back into drinking water, while some of the water is split apart into oxygen and hydrogen in a process known as electrolysis, so that people can breathe. You smell that? Smells like survival. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's more, by combining the newly gained hydrogen with the carbon dioxide given off by every crewmate, astronauts can create water and methane. As we should know, this water can be purified and used for human consumption. Is this going to be another Matrix thing when where humans are, are harvested for their energy? Like, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, the methane potentially going towards Starship's methane supply. Musk once said that the life support systems on Starship would be regenerative, but life support systems tend to be heavy and complex, changing how the vehicle would operate. But besides that, figuring out how to keep people safe in emergency situations is also key. So there's a... There's quite a bit more work that has to go into place. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. <laughs>